like so. Okay. So, first of all, thank you for being here today. So, a short uh, introduction for myself. I'm a senior software engineer working for uh, Arduino since 2014. There are these are my main tasks. What the main, right? I'm the maintainer of our uh, embedded distro for our internet board. I took care also the plain toolchain and cross and for the plus platform ones, just like MIPS, MinJW, W64, ARM, and so on. Some kernel drive backporting, uh, some shell scripting, question and answer on our forum, and support as well. So, I don't know if you, the word Lino uh, rang, rang, rings a bell to you or you have heard, already heard of it. It's just a combination of two very well-known words, Linux and Arduino. So, we have come up with this kind of a bandit system just to uh, customize it for our bots. And it's rely on OpenWRT. It is a, a quite common uh, and very well-known embedded distro for uh, unleash the limits of the uh, most popular small office, home office routers. Its repository are um, usually are providing the most common Unix productivity packages and programming languages such as Python, Ruby, and many more counting. So, but the approach we thought we, we um, the, really the approach we, um, we thought when we started to design it was more of an ecosystem, which is composed a set of Wi-Fi enabled open hardware models to easily make th things. An open hardware software layer to easily put intelligent on things. For sure, an embedded development environment will see that at the end of the talk, the slides. An open cloud-based set of services that make things easily interconnected. And of course, it's made of people, people which are willing to give us also the smallest contribution. So, this is the basic approach for our internet broads, ports. Let's say that is a, a, a Linux core, called the name Chihuahua, and then a generic MCU. It might be, it might be an Atmel, a Nordic, an STM one, but they are, they are on the board just two, are two actual separate entities, but they interact with each other in a seamless way. And it not, not depends on a given MCU, like I just said. So, just can you see in detail, MPU model with Linux OS and system packages, Wi-Fi connectivity, able to operate just as an access point or Wi-Fi client. And then, of course, MCU-based device. And then how we can uh, uh, just take a first draw of how interaction is done. So, we thought a more straight approach. The approach is uh, our new kernel models and more new framework like in IO, which is able to expose microcontroller features such GPIO, analog converters, PWM, I2C, and SPI inside the microprocessor environment in a Unix fashion. So, just consider them just as mapped, just like uh, actual Linux devices. So for this reason, you can write application for high level, with high level lang languages in a very easy way. So this is just the first scenario. Like I, saw, like, like I said, separate the MPU and the MCU with a physical link. So you want an MPU just for SMP or large memory or few peripherals or a few feature OS. When you usually have to deal with the MCU, you have to deal with some constraints. So, for instance, single CPU, small memory, many peripherals, and customized OS. And the physical link, you should know it. It's just any possible SBI, OART, or Ethernet Wi-Fi link. So, with the Lina, with the Lenino I/O approach, is like the MCU is under the hood of the MPU. So all the devices are just are interconnected and mapped inside the Linux systems. Sorry. So usually, as I told you, as I told before, MPU designed for the best average performance. 
cache levels, uh, but in real time is difficult. So, but on the contrary, MCU, the approach on MCU is much simpler. No, no cache and no virtual machine. In real time is guaranteed. So, you want to keep a like, level, level application on MPU and real time stuff on MCU. And that's it's the approach how we think about it in a remote uh, way. Able to control many like, you know, your devices, just uh, uh, discovering it as a local service. And then again, control it directly by your site through Shell, Python, Node.js, and other high level programming languages. So, a couple of remarks about Lino Yo. So, the Lino Yo MCU IO driver devices are regular Linux kernel devices, so they don't necessarily have to be controlled by user space. And as well, the kernel models of system can use them as it should. The most important thing is that MCU peripherals become standard Linux devices so that the MPU can tell where they are and how they are implemented. Just uh, think about them just like a sort of mapping. And MCU devices, the one we are dealing with, have interrupt capability. So you can see GPU interrupts on edge level from user space or kernel. If you want to go deep with the concepts, you just can uh, click on this sim, in, uh, this sim link and allow the paper of my colleague which has developed all the, the stack. So, to show you some example about the Lino just the hello world of the microcontrollers unit. We can are able to turn on the L, the service LED. The one is marked on our bots at L13 with just a couple of shell commands. We have <coughs> first to run to enable you know, yo with a simple shell command. It is a script I wrote some time ago. And then after the reboot of our boards, the presence of this particular for the sys class GPO, GPO chip chain, 100 will tell us that the NIO is up and running as a background service. So, but to fully leverage all the GPOs, all the devices of the MCU, we had to export them. So run again, lean GPO export to enumerate all the available devices. And now we are ready to play around. So just, like I said, we want to turn the turn one to turn on the L13 LED. So before that, just export <coughs> and direction to out. And you have to do and this time and you have to do it every time for any given pin. Or you can also consider the indirection for I don't know your personal use cases according to your project. So it's just a matter of echoing one to the, this particular pin on, the, in this case, D13 to turn on the L13 LED, while we use echo zero to revert it to its original state. And so that's the simple way to run the hello world of microcontroller. You can see uh, the screenshots of our of one of our boards just after echo one and echo zero, just to turn on and turn off the F accordingly. That's another example how to um, use a simple uh, motor <coughs> with variable speed which is related by potentiometer and modulated by PWM signal. A very simple configuration, just the commands just to execute, just to, we have to enable the MCU PWM uh, um, device with this value, and then after then we are able to read the value measured from the ADC or change the motor direction using GPIOs. That's really straight and simple. So we also will think about Lanino and just an open stack with different layers. So these are our 
bestseller boards that are designed around uh, Lanino and Arduino S. So, for example, Arduino Yun, maybe that's familiar for you. Uh, Arduino Yun Mini, Arduino Tian, which is the latest in the family. And last but not least, uh, Industrial 101, which is a uh, uh, little just uh, a compact side board just for industrial purposes. Just don't know, some to run some control flow where uh, size are, is a constraint for your project or oh, no, or for your machinery. And then, after that, the core, the Chihuahua module, which can be a uh, Qualcomm Materos 9331 or 9342. It's a MIPS Bigendian based model. If only it might be uh, run at a frequency of 400 of uh, 540 megahertz, 60 megabyte onboard RAM. You, should, you can also get a micro, a micro SD card slot or a flash memory of 4 gigabyte denomination, USB host device on board, and Wi Fi connectivity, and also in the case of Tien, and Wi Fi and Bluetooth Low Energy. So, this is the next layer the simple open WRT operating system, the Lino Plane, or which is, as I mentioned before, an open source operating system with an easy package management, more than 2,000 packages, robust, and widely adopted by the community. Then, the first approach to the Lino Yoke kernel models, direct, shell, direct access from Linux shell, fast and efficient, based on open standards, and ready for the cloud as well. And then another high level approach, high level approach of Lino Yo, in which we you you see that we can result JavaScript and Node.js and NPM and NPM with uh, more than seventy thousand packages just to write your software. And also, of course, you can uh, mix up them with the direct access to to the MCU devices. And then finally, the let us lay the highest level, the highest layer, just your application, mobile application, cloud application to deploy to the board and to the cloud. Then, starting from a couple of months, we are also uh, running a new interface on our boards for giving the user a desktop experience, which is called Arduino OS. OS. Is based on the OSJS framework. I don't know if something, uh, someone you is uh, aware of that. And uh, the quick features, features a glance. Uh, SSH with terminal based on the shell in a box, a file manager, the quick settings panel, uh, uh, the Lucy configuration, which is the engine of the configuration of the open WRT uh, system as a standalone application in a web frame and some basic desktop, desktop utilities, just I don't know, uh, calculator, notepad, and so on. What you expect from a basic desktop, desktop environment. So, at a glance, this is the settings panel. When you we find access to the most uh, common entries, I don't know, desktop, just desk team, some panels, user configuration, air file view. Again, and the settings panel in, in instead gives you direct access to Arduino specific settings, such as general information, network devices, Wi-Fi, and REST API. And as you can see, it is there are some icon about uh, some warning icons also in the top right part of the screen. So that's is showing most the main desktop utilities, the main desktop utilities, just a comprehensive view. So, as I, as I mentioned before, ND file manager with drag and drop functionality, calculator, text editor, photo viewer, and many more coming. Of course, we are thinking about a Bluetooth control panel for uh, for our TN board. So, as I mentioned before, the Arduino has Lucy, Lucy panel, which is set in a web, separate web frame, and then you can uh, see at the right uh, the 
kernel and system logs as additional frames as well. The shell terminal based on shell in a box, again in another frame to access all the Linux functionalities from that. Relying on SSH, SSH or better drop bear, which is the embedded SSH client for this kind of system. And you also get to have the possibility to open the uh, terminal in a new browser tab, just like shell in a box does. So to make a really complete system, we also try to give the user what the, the missing piece. And in general, that was, and the only thing that was missing was the GCC compiler. Uh, the OpenWRT maintainer started to uh, put it in the official repository from the latest stable release. And they successfully built the uh, 4.8 series. Anyway, we um, try, we were able to find, uh, were able to provide our users the 4.6 compiler for our boards, which has, usually has to be tuned to the build to chain of the SDK. And uh, just uh, so, and, and but and, and since it is uh, built around MicroCLC, uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, this library has several limitations. So when you build uh, your code on the board, just a simple program, you might bind into some errors, some I don't know, some uh, some imports because uh, after all, the MicroCLC is just a uh, a small device library is not can even be compared to the standard ones. If you want to add some other functionalities like uh, I did in the past, and not some other function, C function to your library, just uh, apply some patches in the main SDK and then uh, rebuild the image as well for your board. As well, because uh, because for the reason you can, you we wouldn't be able to leverage all the changes made. Then we also decided to go further and provide the user the AVR toolchain for our bots. Then it means that you are able to build your own firmware for our board on it and then flash straight into the CPU, which a simple wrapper script for AVR dude, at least for the AVR based boards. I, we get this uh, achievement with the, the technique of the Canadian Crush compilation. I know if, if someone here in the hall is familiar with it, but uh, it's uh, pretty much tricky. It involves uh, a cross a net, um, cross compiling toolchain and an IT1 uh, to bring the, the build of the GCC at its very end. But anyway, uh, I managed to find a way to edit the original scripts by Atmel just to uh, pull it off, basically. And so we are able to provide a full AVR toolchain to our user. Usually we deploy the binaries since the average user needs, them, needs just them. But I mean, with, this, with that I mean that you can't just only build Arduino firmware on your board relying on its libraries. You can build a VR, bare a VR firmware for uh, your MCU. You are, um, I don't know, you have some uh, a VR code, your personal code, you, just, you, just, you can just build it on the uh, board and then flash again into the MCU. Just so, if you, we would like to build the firmware, just, uh, I don't know, you need, as I mentioned before, the Arduino libraries, an Arduino sketch, and the make command. And of course, a pre-built file, which I edited just to modify some paths. So at the end, as I show you, as I'll briefly show you, you'll get the firmware in the very same folder. The same flies for the ARM toolchain. Again, the same technique is across Canadian, just leveraging the original uh, scripts from the guys from the, the uh, ARM GCC we were able to provide an Artunche for our boards. So again, you can build your own firmware for your, your device on board 
in this case the TN because it, it is uh, it has on board uh, some D21 microcontroller and then flash it again again straight and simple and again it just not only Arduino firmware but ARM firmware in general bare ARM, ARM firmware the same applies I just, as I just told you as I just told you uh, having an Arduino sketch in the folder, Arduino libraries, we provide them as a, uh, an embedded package. They make command and again they pre build make file with the necessary paths. So, so it's just time to go out just to fire up my virtual machine and uh, show you how it's done. Okay, so this is the login page of Arduino S. Just type the password. So if you're using, you're connecting the board variable for the first time, you'll find a simple wizard guiding you through the configuration process. I just go uh, just go on the next screen since uh, it's a virtual machine we don't need any particular setup anyway that because that will lead me to the Wi-Fi settings and since this is a simulated environment we don't need it but just trying yeah it will ask me to select uh, a Wi-Fi network after after you know, uh, pressing the scan button and connect to the my local network after that uh, will be asked to uh, connect to the board just like simple with the DNS request if you want so just these are the no these setting panels just like I mentioned before slide demonstration a simple editor file manager with drag and drop functionalities and uh, yeah. process viewer system log and last but not least <coughs> uh, the terminal The default password, the, the, the default user and uh, password are Arduino. Since this is just a simple virtual machine, I didn't uh, uh, just I didn't take care of switching them. Yeah, just keep it simple. So, as I mentioned before, just you can see all the pre-built uh, toolchain, binary toolchains, and the uh, Arduino specific files, which are usually are the libraries you will find uh, in our ID. ID. So, sorry, find, okay, going back. Mm. 
Ok, so. As you mentioned before, a simple make file and Arduino sketch just are enough. The Arduino sketch is the well known Blink, a simple 10, 100, 100 millisecond high and 100 millisecond low, simple Blink. This is the, the AVR GCC up and running. And then just running. After a short time, I get my firmware built in the folder, which is a quite impressive result, in my opinion. Yeah, but it is uh, it is uh, no, it is um, a compiler for micro C libc. Yeah, it's cross compiled, but we are able to, of course, provide them on the board. Since uh, uh, I want to do a quick demo, I I usually I mirrored the environment on the board of my virtual machine. Yeah, but that's the same. Of course, I can flash the firmware to. A, to an MCU because I don't have one, it's just a virtual environment. And the same applies for the ARM compilers. Built according to all the full specification of the guys who design it. Again, if I run just the performer clean, okay, just run. Okay, and that's my firmware in the folder, ready to be flashed straight into my MCO. This time with OpenOCD, since we find a reliable way to flash the firmware uh, uh, with uh, a wrapper script relying on OpenOCD. We are dealing with uh, uh, 7021 uh, MCU, so the reliable choice was that, since we have uh, the configuration files of OpenOCD ready and set. So, and then after all, as I mentioned also, the plain GCC if you want to write a simple bare code. Just write this. So that pretty much ends my talk. So if you want any question and answer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. They are, I do, but I do. Um, the fact that uh, we design it for maybe for high level application. Anyway, the MCU, as far as I recall, has uh, bared pretty much well in uh, some uh, not uh, uh, not uh, stressful uh, real time scenarios. Yeah. So it's just time to play around to get. Uh, 
acquainted with the system and uh, know its uh, actual functionalities and possibilities. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, let's say that uh, you, you, it's convenient that you expand your file system uh, with a simple script that we provide. Uh, so just you insert your SD card, yeah, and then expand the file system just being like a whole root system, root file system. And then you're able, of course, to install more software, uh, install the toolchain, which has quite cumbersome. I can complain because the AVR GCC, I'll, I'll just show you. Just uh, decides uh, without the, with, uh, the yeah be, yeah yeah without documentation. And then I we can say something with the uh, I'm tool chain. We say, we say, yeah, we say something because uh, since we don't need documentation, I totally disabled it. Just the backup part. And then you have also to consider the stripping process at the end. Uh, if you compare also the uh, oldest uh, AVR toolchain, they are less cumbersome than the most recent one. I'll show you, I can remember, oops, not the, maybe it's not stripped. Okay, anyway, uh, stripping the binaries lead us, to, of course, to less space occurring on the system. In the case, we have, um, have built our kernel uh, tree, which is, uh, of course, open source. You can find uh, on our repository. I can link you that. And then you can uh, browse all the commits and uh, show the work that has been done. And you are welcome to contribute as uh, everyone, of course. Yeah, that's the the main goal. As I told you, we just we currently have not just only Atmel MCU on board, but it it is designed for a bigger scenario, for a wider scenario, not limiting to a couple of MCU, of course, to generic MCU. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pretty much every. Um, I built all the latest versions of them, especially of the of the ARM, and uh, of course we. I uh, I can build just uh, the latest one for the uh, for for the um, for system relying on the mass library because uh, uh, for some building issue with binutils, so uh, once. Uh, in a couple of months, of course, we'll switch our distro to the latest OpenWRT trunk, relying on a more robust C library, which is Basel. And then again, we were able to provide all the updated toolchains. Anyway, this one has already been tested and compiled also for mass library. So again, this is to repeat, but with an updated distribution. Let's say that GCC because for the plain GCC because be, be, that is residing on our repositories. So just an average user who wants to start GCC on our board, just use the package manager. See me. Of course, you you you're right because we have. Uh, uh, the hardware constraints. Anyway, the average time of building it's uh, about uh, 
30 seconds for 30 45 seconds for the avr architecture and uh, about one minute uh, and a half for um, the arm architecture i did it the, of course the timing compilation is strictly bound to the libraries you use in your project the, the more you had the more the build time is uh, higher yeah, that's the, that's that's that the most the main goal. We thought we we thought we thought it this way. I know, any other questions? Yes, that was another approach. So remote, yes, the, uh, to remotely uh, build the firmware and then flash into the MCU. But uh, this is uh, designed for local projects uh, or for this kind of approach. I have to quickly rebuild my firmware on board. Let's say that I cannot, I don't want to flash it, but just I you know, run a remote command and then the building of my script starts and then flash the firmware into my MCU. So giving, uh, uh, providing these new functionalities or better, a different behavior than the previous one. And, uh, and, um, and I'm always talking about not just Arduino behavior, but uh, bare AVR or bare ARM behavior, bare firmware. So, if you're done, if you're uh, that if, there are, if there aren't any questions, I will thank you for attending my talk and hoping to see you in, a, in another uh, event like this. Of course, again, as a speaker. Thank you.